Last night, I was hanging out with my friend Liz, and she invited two of her friends over. And it was one of those situations where I've only known Liz for four months, maybe, like, if that. Yeah. And the two friends that were over there with her, like, they've known each other for decades. Yeah. It's one of those things. So it's like, all right, I want to make a good impression. And I think I'm a pretty, like, I'm a decent guy, and I'm a fairly competent conversationalist uh, but like i kept trying to crack jokes yeah and in hindsight like, were, you, were you one of those people like how you said drew where you were just putting just cracking fucking lines each a little bit iteration? a little bit but not like not like over the top it's not like <clears throat> hey you guys are talking about this here's something completely unrelated and i'm gonna shout at you yeah. it wasn't it wasn't that bad um and we were all pretty baked so, like, just silences would come on, and I would be like, all right, Bill, it's up to you. Make a good impression. Let's break the silence. And one of the things I said, and, yeah. I think, and I'm still thinking about this, and I don't know if it's, like, I think it's a topic for discussion, is, so, like, do you think there's Yelp reviews for prisons? I, yeah, that's, that, that's a valid question. That, and I think it's funny, like, Google search, like, Danville State Prison, and, like, oh, this prison only gets three stars out of five. You know, yeah. here's their address, or here's their address, here's their hours. And, you know, like, if you Google a restaurant, it'll have, like, a cute little blurb about it, like, yeah. a convivial nautical-themed restaurant. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, Danville, like, a minimum security, like, federal enforced, whatever, so. I love it the way they have organic, locally made soap here. Even if you drop it, it makes it worth it. <laughs> exactly right. So that was... um. I don't know. I think all in all, I did okay. But I wound up spending the night over there. And her friends left. And then it was just me and Liz kicking it. And I was like, hey, is it cool if I spend the night? And she was like, yeah, that that won't be a problem. And I was like, cool. So, like, we go to bed. And she's like, you get in first. Because she's got, like, a queen bed, but it's up against the wall. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, okay. So I get in the bed. And she's like, no, you have to go further against the wall. I was like, okay, so I keep moving, and she's like, no, literally, like, against the wall. So, like, now, like, I'm laying with my back against the wall, you know, like, laying on my left side. Yeah. She's like, okay, perfect. And then she puts down a body pillow parallel with me and, like, pushes it against me. Then she lays on the other side of the pillow. And it's like, uh, 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 all right. Yeah, what what the hell is that supposed to mean? (laughs) Looks like I'll spoon with the pillow. I don't know. Was that just, like, uh, I'm not in the mood pillow type thing? I don't know. I don't know, but it's like... Did I fuck something up? Like, but anyway, and this is all a big Maybe you were supposed to take charge on that pillow is what you wanted. <laughs> yeah, right. You were supposed to take initiative. Right. Um, but the buildup is, uh, it's a joke I want to pitch, frankly. And the joke is this, and that was the buildup for the joke. It's like, I don't know, man. Dating is a lot like backgammon. Like, I just don't fucking get it. Yeah, I was I was about to say, man. That like, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know. You okay. know, I've heard this thing um, that there's like a uh, for years, and it's really weird. I, I read an article on it that for years there's there was just one set of rules specifically made for like women going on dates that like you don't fuck until the third date or something. Like that was like the set rule. The, I don't know. That sounds like. Some people probably still adhere to that. I don't know. There are some yeah. people that don't fuck until marriage. Yeah, like, right. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, and with Tinder around these days, some people that fuck in the first five minutes probably. I, you know. Yeah, right? Like, I don't know. It's all over the place. Oh, you opened my door instead of me having to get it for you. You know, that right. was so hot. <laughs> Let's right. do it now. Yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm not offended, but it's just like, did I... I thought like the whole evening was like kind of building up to at least some mild cuddling. Yeah, but right. like no, I'm like speaking of um, or I'm, I don't know if I'm cutting you off. No, no, no. Go speaking for it. of board games, have you? Okay. <laughs> oh, backgammon. Gotcha. Ha, board ha, games. Okay. Yeah. This might be back to me ranting for two hours on politics. No. All right. I'm sorry. It better Let, not be. No, 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 no. Okay. But have you seen? It's 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 funny because it's it's a mockery of 
what is today? Have you seen this Guess Who video? No. Of two guys playing? No. No? Have I told you about it? Honestly? No. Like, yeah. No. I haven't told you about it at all? No. Okay. So there's a funny video. Um, I, I really love it. It was perfect in taste for me. And Guess Who is the game where like there's all the pictures? Yeah. Like, all the pictures of the faces? Yeah. And, like you like, is it a man? No? Yeah. Thup, 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 oh, here, here. Let me, uh, I'm going to put you in my car. Right, perfect. Go. Well, I just bopped it away with my nose. Yeah. So, anyway, um, the sound effect is thup, 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 yeah, thup, yeah. thup, 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 That's not, you better not be doing another fucking impression, Ross. Come on. <laughs> no, no, it's La- not. This law's drumming. Fuck him. <laughs> no, but anyway, no, the, they, uh, yeah, you you do that, and it, and it says, here's how Guess Who is played in 2018. And it's two, like, really hipster fucking white guys playing, and they're like, um, is your person black? He goes, what? Oh, excuse me? You be, all right, is, is, are they African-American? No, African. What did you just say? No, is your person of color? Th- that's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. And then the next guy, he's like, all right, it's your turn. Or no, you get, you get three tries to go. All right. Um, is your person a, hot chick it's like what and then he grabs his card he's like are, are you are you feeling uncomfortable are you feeling uncomfortable right now it's like you know you can't yeah. like you can't play it in 2008 and then i think that the last one was kind of funny he goes um all right is your person how do i say this genetically inferior to other people um f- from the brows up what the fuck does he's like what the fuck does that mean uh, all right he's a little bit he was um has a little bit in his genes that make him a little bit colder during the cold seasons all right motherfucker is he bald you know <laughs> yeah, bald shaming <laughs> you know and that's and it was so funny because after the weirdest thing after i watched that video there's actually like idiots who are looking for reasons why games can be offensive because what i found out recently is people got mad about um monopoly saying that there's going to be a revised version saying that like you don't get a second chance when you're out of jail <laughs> you know shit like that <laughs> 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 i'm like what the fuck and then and then i i get i'm just waiting for somebody to bitch about how like if oh well, look at all these different segregated properties, and some are l- more expensive than others. Real estate is a perfect, you know, example how things get Im- impoverished, you know, or, or are manipulated in order to be impoverished. I mean, I guess that could be a valid argument, but it, dude, at the end of the fucking day, it's a fucking board game. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, but and I, I don't agree know. with you. I thought it was just kind of a funny thing. Can I can I tell a really funny story? Mm-mm. mm-mm. Can your turn? Nope, sorry, no funny stories here. Only no can, sad. I, can I okay, can I tell you a really awkward and shaming story and depressing story for the mood? Does yeah, does it fit into our seasonal depression theme? Seasonal dep- um let me let me just go over it real quick. <laughs> I don't care, dude. Tell it's kind of story. De- it's it's kind of depressing. Don't care. Say whatever you want. Oh, I don't pissed off right now. <laughs> no. It, okay, so I was invited for a my girlfriend um, has a friend named Mary, so so we might ha- I might have to mention a bunch of names in order to follow along. But so my girlfriend's best friend is Mary. She was having a surprise party, and I'm sure they're never going to watch this thing, so they won't get offended. But any anyways, they um, we hate them all. Yes. Ma- so we were throwing a surprise. Par- her sister was throwing a surprise party for her. So Mary's we- sister was throwing a surprise party for, for Mary. Mary. Yes. Okay. I forgot what Mary's sister's name is. I don't know. We'll call her uh, Penny. I don't know. And anyways, so 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 she's throwing um a party, and so everybody showed up early to sort of you know, hey, it's your birthday, it's give right. her a cake straight to the face, you know, like, yeah. and so I show up, and I forgot that um you know I got horrible fucking memory. Kelly had told me a while back that Mary's sister, because we actually ran into Mary's sister at the zoo. One of her children is, uh, they have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And the four-year-old uh, girl, she, they don't really talk about it. Um, I think she might have, she's either autistic or has seizures all the time. Okay. So, like, for so like exa- some sort of developmental. Yeah. 
and and they keep telling everybody that they haven't found out yet because it's really i don't know it's just really sad it's i mean she's four and she just learned how to walk she doesn't really react to anybody like talking to her or saying anything you know um it's it's really sad. I don't, I don't know. It's just really sad because cause the two-year-old is already walking and talking and everything, you know? Yeah. So she's. J- I feel like she might be very alienated, you know? Sure. And the parents, both of them are National Guard. So they're sort of like this, I mean, I guess, you know, the very uh, typical, like, like, you know, gung-ho Marine, tough and right. just very macho the type typical people. Typical gung-ho National Guard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so Ura. well I, yeah, yeah i i don't i don't know i don't even i'll be honest i don't i'm not educated enough about military to know like national guard and mil- i know national guard is more like uh security for military buildings right i don't know I, well a- a- anyways they're they're super um whatever i'm trying to say <laughs> anyways uh i completely did not i forgot about this whole story that you know one of the children is a little behind sure so i show up to this party and here I am trying to be social, trying to not for once have a fucking foot in my mouth shit. And the dad has the daughter on his shoulders. Have I told you about this? That You've told me, but I don't think the podcast. Okay, yeah. And the daughter is the one who has the developmental problems, is staring at the ceiling fan for about 20 minutes, hair in every direction like the exorcist, drooling all over the place, just food all over her. And I go, oh yeah, hell yeah! This is a party. That's how I looked when I was w- for New Year's. That's exactly how I looked. And the dad's just like, "What the fuck is that supposed to mean?" And then here, you know, I am. Uh, trying tr- uh, 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 yeah, uh, there was a National Guard guy holding me on his shoulders, and I had too much pizza. I didn't, I, you know. <laughs> so that was a great way to enter that party. Yeah, but. nice. So you and the father became best of friends yeah luckily we um we softened the party up by watching a lot of uh mark gormley videos i think i told you about that yeah the yeah the green screen yeah the green screen uh I, g- acoustic guitar god i yeah but that was my foot in mouth story yeah oh I, I have another funny story oh do tell or another depressing story oh good <laughs> i don't think i don't know if i ever told you about this but um I hope it wasn't because of me. So, have you ever gone to Naperville? Yes. Do, have you ever heard of the bell tower there? Yes. And did I tell you about this or no? The, keep going. Okay. Anyways, I so Naperville is a a little bit higher class suburb, I would say. There's fucking like three floor mansions out there. It's very very high class, and they have this public park there. That is absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty sure you get fined like quadruple the amount that you would anywhere else because it's just super maintained. They have a lot of wild animals living there that... Wait, fined for what? Fined for littering there. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, oh yeah, that I didn't mention it. But uh, yeah, it's just super, super clean. Um, You get fined. They have a lot of... uh, Like I was trying to catch some really rare frogs they had in the ponds there. Okay. And... um. Yeah, it's just very beautiful. It's like something out of, I don't know, The Sims. And they have a bell tower there. Looks badass as hell. I fell in love immediately. It looks like some shit straight out of Skyrim or Lord of the Rings. It looks like that tower that uh, that Gandalf fights the um, the evil lord on top of. You know what I'm talking about or no? Uh, yeah. And, um, Saruman. <clears throat> yeah. So I uh, the guy who's like in metal bands or something, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, the late Christopher Lee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I heard that there's bells in there and that they have a tour for it. So I'm like, oh, that'd be really, really fucking interesting. Let's go. So the story about this bell tower is that uh, this guy built this. Uh, it, it's really, really tall. I forgot how tall it is, but it it's about, I would say, seven to ten house, average houses on top of each other. And it uh, goes over the whole city. And every weekend, it, I think every four hours, it's programmed to a computer to play like a really nice song for the whole town. Um, and do, 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 do. Yep. Do, 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 do. No, no, no. Not like, like they'll actually play uh, 
any, I mean, any song you can request. They, they could play like uh, Ode to Joy or something, uh, like Singing in the Rain. Faith by George Michael? Uh, actually, yeah. You, you know, if you... You could rent out the park for a private party okay. and request songs to be played by, by yeah, the... Yeah, for the low, low price of how many tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so I'm going on this tour, going up the stairs, and they're explaining to us how like each bell was very intricately you know, masoned and... Uh, so you went on a tour of it? Yeah, I, I went on a tour uh, on, on a tour of the bell tower to explain how like how the, the how long it has been there why it was built i guess it was built on um one of the only places in the u.s that has really uh very um rare lime rock or something like limestone yeah li- like a quarry yeah they, they they said they uh uh there was like a f- 300 400 foot no it was like two mile deep hole that they dug for limestone because it was like one of the biggest concentrations there and then like afterwards they were like oh well how, what the fuck are we going to do with this hole yeah we got a big old hole here so, so they they made uh like like a man-made beach there <laughs> they, they grabbed their garden hoses and just filled it up yeah yeah they, they, they have they have a beach there that um has like a wave uh uh pool there that you go like like you Weird. can surf there and shit. Okay. And uh we yeah, we went on like a paddle boat. You could have a a canoe and all this um that's cool. All this so it's so it's cool. But but so I, so we're in this bell tower and the lady says, you know, these uh there's there's a huge piano layout where they pretty much replicated a piano uh the way it's set up with the keys and instead of strings it hits the different notes of the bells. Okay. And she's like, you know, there we're going under repair. Uh, we're going. We we might need to go under repairs because it hasn't been syncing good with the computer songs, and uh, the keys they're like the size of a fist, and you actually have to play them with a fist. You have to like punch them down and shit. If you, okay, it, it they have uh, people who know how to play it that that go there and play it when whenever it's like a private party and be yeah. like, hey, I I want you to play. <laughs> it's a hard knock life, you know. <laughs> so so of course i go uh are we allowed to play she says well i'm just a tour guide but where it's definitely prohibited go oh okay you guys just keep walking and kelly and the tour guide kept walking and i played for the whole town the jeopardy theme song the thinking do 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 and um then she caught me yeah so once i got to that part called security yeah <laughs> and the best part is a uh, few days ago i was looking it up just to be like oh i wonder how is it what is it, what do they do with it yeah, in the what's winter what's going on with the bell tower yeah and apparently there's a uh repair needed that's going to be costing 3.8 million dollars for the <sighs> town so let's just say i hope the jeopardy theme song didn't ruin that um, I'm actually happy you brought that story up because it falls right into our theme of seasonal depression. Because can you imagine a more depressing job than being a bell tower tour guide? <laughs> like, just all right. Here's a bunch of stairs. All right, yeah. here are the bells. Any questions? Bell. No, <laughs> no one ever has any questions. <laughs> that, but it was a nice time, a nice romantic. Yeah. Cardio exercise yeah. with. I'm the still honey trying bun. to think of a more depressing job than a bell tower guy. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Trying to think of it. It's hard to think of. I'm sure they're out there. Actually, when I was looking for a job uh, during that six month unemployment, sure. there was a job. It, it was seasonal, which is why I didn't take it. There was a job where you just ride a bicycle from town to town, and you take. <laughs> Uh, eye droplet samples of each body of water in order to measure the uh, everything, the, the parasites in the water, whether it's good or not. or Yeah, like the content, the pH. Yeah, which I guess, I don't know, that might be cool, but I don't know if that's really, oh, hey, I, I got to go drive to all these, ride to all these fucking ponds 20 miles apart and just get gra- gather some water. And then I'm going to be unemployed in the next 
three months, you know? I, I don't know. I bet there are people that'd be super into that, man, like conservation and things. Oh, yeah. It, it, w- it would be cool, but I'd feel like if I did that, you know, where do you move up from there? Yeah, you know? right. Especially if you don't have any, like, college education. Oh, listen, I know how to ride a bike and gather water, okay? You definitely want me in, as an accountant in this job. You that, know? right, yeah. It's, um, I don't know. Jimmy John's delivery bikers. Yeah. Say that moving on up. Like, no, dude, no more sandwiches, no more people, just me and ponds. Yeah. It's, I'm a doctor, damn it. I'm a scientist. So, uh, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Um, Gotta say, I ate a lot of White Castle. Not feeling super great. <laughs> <laughs> the um, are you sure it's the white don't blame your depression yeah. seasonal depression on white castle okay? yeah, no i thought white castle was the cure for the seasonal depression i guess i was wrong <laughs> you know um so i i i feel like i i went into a little bit earlier but um off the podcast but i feel uh like so recently i've had really 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 horrible fucking anxiety really horrible anxiety and a lot of it has been just people bringing up politics at work I'm not gonna get into that but uh, not even, no, it's just people debating over dumb shit and, you know, I just... Like, what job is more depressing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which I was... Yeah, man, why are you bringing up that dumb shit? No, but it's just, yeah, you just are not even, or or whether art schools should exist, you know, it's a viola, it's not a violin. Just shit like that. People, no, people just get get really offended easily these days and a lot more sensitive and I feel like... When um, I feel that a big reason how seasonal depression affects people, like winter, I think it has a lot to do with just people don't go out and do shit. Sure. And 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 not only that, but in the sense of like for me specifically, I think it's I need to have an adrenaline rush, because for a while, um, it's like I can I'm complete. I, I think I'm a pretty social person. Like if you go to a party or if we're at the bars, so I, I think sure. I speak pretty well. Yeah. And I didn't understand how there'd be certain moments where I'd be talking with people and I just get like, I f- either freeze up or I get really super shaky and I didn't know what it was. And I realized what it was, was just dumb fucking topics like politics. So I read up on this and it's not social anxiety. It's, um, high blood pressure during confrontation, Okay, you know, which, which really blew my mind. Cause I'm like, holy fuck. I get, I put myself, you know, Oh, I go to a show. And go to a mosh pit where I could get completely trampled or into a fight. I wonder why I have anxiety. Sure. Or, you know, but I, but on the other hand, I was thinking maybe adrenaline rushes help people who have depression. Because it's sort of like, I don't know, if if you threw somebody, um, you know, when you have somebody. For example, I used to go out a lot more. I used to party a lot more. You know, getting older, no, sure. no nobody goes out anymore. If you threw somebody who's super fucking depressed, right? Mm. And you throw them into some, I don't know, battlefield or dropped them off in some really gang-ridden neighborhood. I'm pretty sure that would spark them out of their depression. Be like, I got to run. I got to get the fuck out of here. You know? One would hope. Like it it wouldn't um, slow them down. You know, if you throw them in the middle of, I don't know, Gaza Strip or something, you know? Right. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'll be sad later, but I'll be alive. I think that, and I think that's how I cope with my anxiety. I go skiing on the highest fucking slope right away, or I go skydiving, or I try and get away with a hit and run, you know? Sure. I don't know. And you succeed. Hey, 